Jim here with another pickups video um, and this is actually going to be my last pickups video until I'm moved into my new home in Texas um, and then once I'm there I don't know it might be a while before I do another one of these because I, I don't really intend to to buy any American games I already have more than my fill with Japanese games so I'll probably stick to picking up Japanese games online when I'm in the States and uh, I don't know I might not ever do any pickups videos again but uh, we're here now so let's check out some games I've picked up recently alright so I'm still on a um, I guess you could say a shoot 'em up kick for the Xbox 360 um, recently did a video featuring some of the ones I picked up that are region free um, so let's just check some of these games out. First up is Ginga Force. Uh, this is one of the ones that's region free. Um, pretty cool. Um, changes viewpoints from top down to kind of an isometric view. Uh, lots of upgrades for your ships and uh, really challenging. A lot of fun. Ginga Force. Pretty good one. Here we have one called Strike Witches uh, based on the anime series which I actually liked uh, quite a bit. Um, it's a side-scrolling shoot 'em up but it, it kind of disappoints me. You have three of the um, girls using them all at the same time, uh, kind of like Battle Mania, except with three characters instead of two, and they all have their own unique shot types, but it, it, it's struck down by the fact that the characters, after they fire off um, a certain amount of shots they have to charge back up so you're constantly switching back and forth and it just it makes the whole uh, game more difficult than it really needs to be this could have been a lot more fun but uh, Strike which is still not terrible um, here we have Caladrius uh, Caladrius another top-down shoot -em up bullet hell uh, this one is very difficult um, not just because of the amount of bullets on screen, but it just it feels like the you move a bit slower in this one than I'm accustomed to with a lot of these shoot 'em ups. Uh, but still, uh, pretty cool. Caladrius. This one is Katsui. Um, this is another top-down bullet hell shooter. It's developed by 5PB, who developed uh, the. I know they worked on some Dodon Pachi games. They work with Cave on a lot of games. Oh, what is it? Um, oh, <laughs> Bullet Soul. They make Bullet Soul. Um, this is pretty cool. You, you're using uh, some helicopters, some choppers, and you're just blowing stuff away. Top down, shoot them up. Really good. Uh, this one really good too. This one's region free, and I got it for super cheap because there's some damage on the box. Other than that, the game is uh, in great condition, and it came with a CD soundtrack as well. This is Mushihime-sama Futari. Uh, this is a top-down shoot 'em up where you're a chick riding on bugs and you're blowing up other bugs and it's cool. It's got kind of a nature theme to it. 
and it's a lot of fun. And like I said, this is another one that's region free. Mushihime Sama Futari. Check this one out. Pretty cool. Uh, here's another really good cave bullet hell shooter, a side scroller. This is Akai Katana Shin. Um, Akai Katana got a international release in the States and I think in Europe as well. Um, this is Akai Katana Shin, so it has one or two more modes on it. And then this is the box set, came with a soundtrack, as is uh, typical of these. And uh, really cool, Akai Katana Shin. This one is a uh, Mamoru kun. This is very cool. Um, this is another special edition one. It came with uh, soundtrack and the perfect terror. I haven't watched it yet, but it's a DVD. Um, really cool. It's a shoot 'em up, but you have total control over your character. So you walk around through the levels uh, freely. It's still a fairly linear game, but you control your you know your comings and your goings. Um, lots of different characters to choose from. In the arcade mode, you just pick whichever character you want. They all have different shot types, and then you play through the mode. And the story mode, you actually select all of the characters. You just put them in whatever order you want to use them in. And as soon as one gets hit, you switch over to another one. And when you find a health power-up, you bring uh, one of your uh, downed characters back into the game. Um, so it's very cool, very cutesy and colorful, as you can plainly see just by looking at this uh, packaging. But a, a, a really cool game, uh, Mamoru Kun, look it up on Xbox 360, uh, it's not reason free but it's really really good. Um, this doesn't go in here because I already showed that last time, but this does. This is Bullet Soul Infinite Burst, uh, this came out last month, um, so I picked up this special edition which comes with the game itself, obviously, and then this uh, uh, magazine. Which is, it's, uh, I didn't even know that it was going to come with this, um, but it's a uh, Xbox 360 magazine here in Japan, it's the Bullet Soul Special, so that's pretty cool to have that, and, well, that's it really, I guess. I think this came with a CD soundtrack as well, um, it did indeed, CD soundtrack, very cool. Um, this has an excellent soundtrack to it. I actually did a short video on this um, without any commentary, just playing the game. So check that out. And this is another one that's region free. Bullet Soul Infinite Burst. Very cool. And those are a bunch of uh, shoot 'em ups for the Xbox 360. Okay, so I got plenty of Nintendo goodness here across uh, several consoles. First up, I got some GameCube games. Um, I got a copy of Luigi's Mansion, which is very cool. I didn't have this in the, you know, launch title and pretty well acclaimed. Uh, fun game, Luigi's Mansion. Um, this is the Nintendo Puzzle Collection. So it's got, what the hell is that? Uh, Panel de Pomme, Dr. Mario, and Yoshi's Cookie. Um, three pretty classic Nintendo puzzle games. Um, not much else to say really, just a collection of some puzzle games. I like these collections, these and this one and like the Sonic collection and the Mega Man collections, they're all pretty cool. Mario Party 4, Mario Party games are always fun to play when you've got a group of friends around. Dance Dance Revolution Mario, which I don't have a dance pad for the GameCube so kinda moot, but there it is, pretty cool. And this, this was really uh, interesting to me. Um, it's the GameCube version of Far East of Eden 2. Which is, I was really surprised when I saw this. This is a series that was really popular on the PC Engine in like the early 90s, like late 80s, early 90s. So it was really weird to see this on the GameCube, but uh, still pretty cool. Far East of Eden 2 for the GameCube. Some Famicom games. This is Kaiketsu Yanchamaru 2 Karuk Karakuri Land. Karakuri Land. Um, it's a fun action platformer made by Iron, where you play a little ninja guy named Yanchamaru. And I don't know what else to say. It's just it's a colorful, fun game. Kind of reminds me a little bit of. Uh, the Mass Ninja Hanamaru. Kind of similar to that one. This might even be a knockoff if you want to go that far. But Yanchamaru 2, pretty cool. Uh, here's a game that got a stateside release. 
It's Dragon Fighter, another action platformer, which I actually found myself liking quite a bit. It's not a bad game. Dragon Fighter. Um, here we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the Manhattan Project. Um, if you're saying to yourself, isn't that Turtles 3? It is, uh, internationally. But here in Japan, this is part 2. Um, the arcade game in Japan is actually simply called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Manhattan Project is Turtles 2. And the original Turtles game on the NES is uh, an entirely different title. It's basically the equivalent of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just in Japanese. Um, Kame no Ninja Tyson, something like that. I can't remember. But uh, Manhattan Project, really great game. Uh, here's an excellent RPG for the Famicom. It's East 2. Um, I like the East games. They're better on the PC Engine, but they're still not not bad at all on the Famicom. Very cool. East uh, and two shoot 'em ups by Konami. This first one, Salamander, which is more or less just another Gradius, and it's very good. And then here we have Parodius Da, which um, I like the Parodius games. Again, just like Gradius, except really colorful and wacky and always a lot of fun. Parodius. And then some Super Nintendo games. This one, the box came a little chewed up, but it was only a few bucks. It's uh, Mickey's uh, Tokyo Disneyland Adventure. Um, it's a Japan exclusive Mickey game where you have uh, balloons and you can make water balloons or gas balloons to fly around or bounce off of or throw at enemies. Um, pretty cool game. Again, um, a Japan only Mickey game. Not bad. Um, here we have yet another Sailor Moon puzzle game. It's Sailor Moon S Kurukurin. And it's... you're just breaking blocks. There's, like, items at the top of the screen, and you're trying to break, break the blocks to get the items to fall down to the bottom of the screen so you can collect all the items. It's pretty fun, and you always playing against a computer-controlled opponent or two players. Um, but Yet another Sailor Moon puzzle game. I think this is like my fifth one. Crazy that they made so many. And here we have a beat em up. It's Aliens vs. Predator, where you just play as a predator beating the hell out of a ton of aliens. Uh, it's fun, kind of cheap sometimes. Can be really unfair, but still pretty cool. Aliens vs. Predator. Um, and then we have three RPGs. First by Enix, it's a copy of Star Ocean which I've still yet to get around playing, but uh, the sequel, Star Ocean The Second Story on the PlayStation, I played for a ridiculous number of hours. I really, really love that game. So I'm looking forward to starting to play this one uh, just as soon as I get around to it. I just have a lot of games to play recently. Uh, here we have uh, another RPG by Squaresoft. This is Front Mission Gun Hazard. Um, very good game, very, like the graphics are typical of Square around this time, they're very great graphics, very great music, but instead of having a big emphasis on magic, it's more like guns and mechs and stuff like that, very cool. Um, Front Mission games uh, eventually were released in the States, I believe on the PlayStation or PlayStation 2, but I'm pretty sure all the Super Famicom releases stayed exclusive to Japan, and they're pretty cool. And lastly, really great game, sequel to a lot of people's top 5 to 10 RPGs on the system, maybe even top 5 to 10 games. Uh, this is Seiken Densetsu 3. It is a direct sequel to The Secret of Mana, and it's really, really good. The opening uh, title screen and what have you isn't as impressive as The Secret of Mana, um, but when you get into playing it, it's just just like Secret of Mana, really great graphics, really great music, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, Seiken Densetsu 3, really great game, um, worth importing if you're into that kind of thing. And that's a bunch of really cool Nintendo stuff I picked up recently. Okay, so most of what's in this stack is Sega stuff, except for these top two games. They're both PC Engine games. Um, first up, Cosmic Fantasy 4. It's a really good turn-based JRPG, and as you know, typical of PC Engine CD games, shows off a lot of pretty cool uh, anime-style cutscenes and some good CD-quality music on there. And then this one, 
is an unlicensed PC Engine game called Lady Sword. It's kind of a dungeon crawler RPG with some kind of mild pornographic elements to it. Um, but yeah, you can look on the side and see that this is an unlicensed game made by Games Express. Um, not much else to say about this. Porno kind of dungeon crawler for the PC Engine. Alright, the rest of this is Sega stuff and it's all pretty damn cool. For the Saturn, I got a copy of Gunbird. Uh, this is uh, developed by Psycho and published by Atlas. So the same combination that brought uh, Sengoku Blade, which is another really, really great shoot 'em up. Or is that one's a side scrolling one? This one's top down. Uh, really cool. You're not in, you know, spaceships or airplanes or anything like that. You're kind of these cool characters. You're like a witch on a broom, or this chick who's pretty much just like Goku. She rides a cloud and has a power pole. Um, Gunbird, very cool. I'd be really interested to get Gunbird 2 for the Dreamcast. But uh, as it stands, the first one on the Sega Saturn is really cool. Really happy to have that. Another game I'm really um, always happy when I find a different version of it. It's Police Knots. Um, this is now my third copy of Police Knots. Um, I have it on the PlayStation and the 3DO as well. Um, this, the Saturn version, really great version just like the other ones and uh, this one is cool because one this sleeve is awesome very durable very cool looking sleeve and this one came with an art book which is just like just awesome um, it even has these cool like overlays so you can show you know check out different uh, covers this if I can flip it over um, this white one here for instance is the cover to the 3DO version. Um, I think, I don't know if that one's the cover of the PlayStation one. Well, anyway, it's, um, uh, came with a really cool art book, Police Knots, oh, and stickers, yay, stickers. Um, Police Knots, if you're not familiar with it, is, it's a Hideo Kojima game. Um, this game is the one that come, came after, um, Snatcher. I almost said Blade Runner. Um, <laughs> um, but this is uh, Kojima's next game after Snatcher. Um, a lot of um, stuff in here shows up again in uh, Metal Gear Solid. In particular, the little song at the beginning of the, um, the game as it starts up. There's a song in here that plays also at the beginning of MGS. And also there's a character in here named Meryl who um, looks exactly like the Meryl in Metal Gear Solid. Um, but Police Knots, really great game. It's uh, kind of like Snatcher. It's text heavy and you're talking to people and you're learning, picking up clues and stuff. The characters are very much like Riggs and Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon. Um, action sequences, just shooting and great animations and music and all kinds of stuff. It's a real shame that this never came to the States. Police Knots, a really great game on any system that you can play it on. Um, I think there's some English uh, patches out there. If you can, play Police Knots. It's really awesome. Dreamcast stuff. Copy of Mr. Driller. Fun little puzzle game where you're trying to keep your little Mr. Driller guy from getting squished. Very cool. I like that a lot. Uh, this one, Puyo Puyon. Um, it's Puyo Puyo 4. So this is a play on words, because the Japanese word for four is yon, so Puyo Puyon, Puyo Puyo 4. Um, just another cool Puyo Puyo game. There are not really a great deal of differences between one or the other, uh, but they're always fun. Puyo Puyo 4. Um, here we have a copy of Fighting Vipers 2. Um, just a fun arcade style 3D fighting game. It's not all in-depth like Virtua Fighter, it's just very kind of like fast and fun and hectic and just nothing you really have to think about too much. Just an easy pick up and play 3D fighter. Uh, here's a copy of Rent a Hero number one. Um, very cool game. Uh, really like Rent a Hero, the first one on the Mega Drive. This one really cool as well. You're just a dude in a superhero suit and you are now a hero for hire. Um, you run around your town passing out flyers trying to get people to hire you to go I don't know, do hero stuff, beat people up, and that kind of thing. So, uh, Rent a Hero number one. This is a cool Sega series that never made it outside of Japan. 
And then this is Dela Jet Set Radio. Um, the original Jet Set Radio released in Japan is um, not the same as what uh, we got in the rest of the, the world in Europe and in the States as Jet Grind Radio. Um, so this updates the original Jet Set Radio with additional stages and changes to the story and I think maybe even some more music and tweaks to the camera control. Um, really great uh, Dela Jet Set Radio. I absolutely love Jet Set Radio. Really happy to have this game. Some Mega, Mega Drive stuff. This first game I thought was Tiger Heli when I first got it. Um, it's not. I believe even though there's a Tiger and a helicopter on the cover, this is not Tiger Heli. I think the um, US or English title is um, Twin Cobras. Um, if I can read it correctly, it's Kyukyoku Tiger. Um, it's a top-down shoot 'em up with helicopters, and it's really fun. Uh, another really great shoot 'em up. This is Elemental Master. Um, really awesome, kind of like uh, medieval, mythical um, themes to it. You're a guy on foot. You're an elemental master, I guess, just running around blasting the hell out of monsters. And every time you clear a level, you get some new powers, and it's they're really useful, and it's a really good game. I really like this one. Elemental Master, very cool. Got another Sailor Moon game, oh my god. Uh, Bishoujo Senshi Sailor Moon for the Sega Mega Drive. It's a beat-em-up. Um, not exactly the same as the Super Famicom version, but close enough. Sailor Moon for the Mega Drive, very cool. Uh, here we got a copy of Garo Densetsu 2, or Fatal Fury 2. Um, really great game on the Mega Drive when you're playing with the six button controller. Um, just fantastic. I really love the Fatal Fury series. These are probably my favorite characters um, in all the SNK games. Um, Fatal Fury 2 on the Mega Drive, really good. And this last game is an absolutely butchered port uh, of a really great game. Um, this is the Mega Drive version of Double Dragon 2 The Revenge. I don't know how they managed to ruin this game so badly. It's so choppy and unresponsive and just terrible. It pales in comparison to the the 8-bit version which is really very sad. The Mega Drive is capable of so much more than this. Double Dragon 2 on the Mega Drive. Such a disappointment. And that's uh, some really cool Sega stuff and a couple of PC Engine games. Okay, and lastly, I have some PlayStation and PlayStation 2 games. I got some really excellent stuff uh, this time around. Uh, this first game on top, it is Hyakuju Sentai Gao Ranger. It's another uh, 3D Power Rangers game. It's a beat em up, and then you're in the giant mechs and you're killing monsters. Uh, lots of fun. Um, based on one of the Power Rangers shows, it's um, where they're animals. I guess. Um, this one, I don't know, I stopped watching Power Rangers when I was like nine years old, so uh, I didn't follow the series much after the original cast left. Um, but this, I really do like this game a lot, and I like the other one too, the uh, the Ninja one. Um, both really good. Some Gao Ranger. Very cool. Uh, this game, Vampire Hunter D. Um, I used to have a copy of this a long time ago. Uh, this did get a stateside release. I remember it getting absolutely terrible reviews, um, but I, I ended up renting it anyway because I was such a big fan of the anime and I actually liked it and I ended up buying a copy eventually. Um, it's kind of, it's more or less an action game, but it has like very Resident Evil um, leanings. You're exploring like a big mansion, basically trying to rescue this girl from the, the vampire lord of this manor. So it's like a weird Castlevania Resident Evil hybrid. Um, it's not the best game out there, uh, but it's certainly not terrible. Vampire Hunter D. Check it out. Speaking of vampires, um, perhaps my favorite vampire game of all time uh, here in Japan, it's called Kane the Vampire, known in the States as Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. I love this game. It's one of my favorite PlayStation games of all time. Um, just, if you've never played Blood Omen Legacy of Kane, the original, uh, I highly recommend it. It got released on PlayStation and PC in the States. Uh, Kane the Vampire, which is a much less imaginative title. Um, 
here we have a copy of Abe A Go Go. This was released elsewhere as Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. Love this game. Uh, again, the Oddworld games, some of my absolute favorites for the PlayStation and even on the Xbox. I really like the ones there too. And I'm looking forward to new and tasty. I'm really glad to see the uh, Oddworld games coming back. So Abe A Go Go. Really cool game. Um, here, a trilogy of games. I had already gotten the greatest hits of uh, this one, this uh, Clayman Clayman. Uh, known in the States as The Neverhood, this was a PC game there. It only came out on the PlayStation in Japan. And it's a point and click puzzle game, which works really well with the uh, um, dual shock controller, actually. Then the next game here, Clayman Clayman 2. This was released elsewhere as Skull Monkeys. It's a really awesome platformer. And both of these are just entirely claymation. Uh, really great games from Doug Tenable, the uh, guy who created Earthworm Jim, some of my other favorites. And then this third game is a Japan exclusive. It's called Clayman Gun Hockey. And it's basically the characters from the Neverhood games playing air hockey with like little guns to shoot the puck around. Um, it's kind of lame. It was not made by anyone <laughs> uh, from the Neverhood development team. Um, it's not even claymation like the other two games, it's just 3D polygons. Um, again, this was a Japan exclusive. I guess the uh, Neverhood games were popular enough where they thought this could sell. Um, but there you go, all three games in the uh, Neverhood series. Um, some more of my favorites, uh, Neverhood and Skull Monkeys are just two amazing games. Um, really great, cool graphics, character designs, and awesome soundtracks. Check out the Neverhood. All right, and all these PS2 games, <coughs> um, I got more than this. I actually got some really uh, cool stuff, but I decided I would just stick with these because there's a theme. I kind of just, I don't know if it was subconscious or what, but I bought a whole lot of horror games, and I've been enjoying them a lot, just playing them with the lights out, and uh, I really do enjoy playing a good horror game, and PlayStation 2 had some of the best. Um, I got three Silent Hill games here. Um, Silent Hill 3, which I do like uh, quite a bit. Um, Silent Hill 4 The Room, which was, this was my first time playing it. I had heard from people that it was not uh, such a good one, but I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. And then I also got the PS2 version of Silent Hill Shattered Memories, um, which is also pretty damn cool. So three Silent Hill games. I really do like the Silent Hill series. I've played uh, all of them, one all the way up through uh, Downpour, and I've, I've liked them all, actually. Um, here we have a copy of Siren, which is creepy enough, I guess. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, it's, it doesn't do it for me as much as the Silent Hill games do. For some reason, this game just isn't creeping me out very much. I'm not very scared when I'm playing this game. Um, but I'll play it some more and maybe that'll change. But uh, Siren, another interesting horror game to check out. Uh, this one, really cool. Uh, Kuon. Um, this one um, has like a, a, you know, feudal era Japan um, setting and very dark, very atmospheric and creepy. Um, there, mixture of like ghosts and then also like these little monsters and the only way to fight them off are with the you know, little pieces of paper that you can throw at them to burn them or poison them or what have you. Um, very cool. This did get a US release though I had never heard of it before. Um, I don't know how you know successful it was you know, internationally but Kuon. Um, check this one out. Uh, creepy, uh, pretty cool game. Uh, I, I like it. I'm, I'm getting into it. <clears throat> Speaking of, this is one that I only started playing last night, but very cool. Um, it's Rule of Rose. Um, I like this one quite a bit. I, um, so far, from up to what I've played, not a single bit of combat took place. Um, but I was still just loving it. It was just like so creepy and cool and atmospheric. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to playing further into this game. Uh, Rule of Rose, this got an international release as well. Um, if you've never checked it out, 
I recommend you do. Pretty cool. Might be something uh, of interest. <coughs> and then these three games, all three in the Zero series, um, known elsewhere as Fatal Frame. So there is one, uh, two, and three. Um, so far, I'm still in the middle of playing the first one, so I haven't gotten to the sequels yet, but I am really, really enjoying uh, the first Fatal Frame. Um, really cool, very, very creepy, dark, atmospheric, kind of, you know, very reminiscent of some, you know, more classic Japanese horror films like Juon and The Ring and stuff. Just um, creepy, and you get really up close and personal with the ghosts. Um, when you got to take their pictures and they're right up in your face and it's very suspenseful and I like it because it's subtle you know you don't there's not just all these monsters and stuff running around you're always kind of waiting and anticipating when the ghosts are going to show up and it, it really builds a lot of suspense and uh, I really like that so I'm looking forward to finishing the first one and getting into the uh, the sequels as well um, really great games the Fatal Frame series uh, if you've never checked them out, I recommend you do, especially if you're looking for something good uh, in a horror title. And <coughs> that's it. That's all the pickups for this video. I um, uh, hope you liked what you saw. Let me know in the comments what you think of these. Um, and again, this is going to be my last uh, pickups video for at least a very long time. Pretty soon I'm going to start having to pack all this stuff up and get it shipped out to Texas. Um, which I'm lucky enough that my employer, um, I, I can ship it on their dime. Um, so it's not going to cost me a great deal unless I exceed a certain weight limit, which I might with all these uh, games and stuff. But um, yeah, so that's it. Last pickups video for a very long time. Thank you for watching. I do hope you enjoyed, and do please come back next time. Take it easy.